life different in Ireland than in the UK? Oh, uh, very, very different. I came from a small town in County Cork. Um, hardly any cars, hardly any traffic. Um, when I came to England, big, big, Croydon was a really big town. Loads of cinemas, um, lots of people. Everybody's accent was different, lots of foreigners. Um, and it was very, very different. Um, uh, I, I, you, you couldn't really compare it to Ireland. Ireland was very quiet and clean and empty. And a big, a big town was very busy. What made you want to join the Navy? Well, I was uh, in the sixth form at uh, school, and uh, I just uh, coming up to completing my A levels. I got maths, physics, and chemistry, and uh, I had seen a number of films and done a, a certain amount of reading, and um, I decided that I'd like to fly, and so I joined the Fleet Air Arm. the Navy, was it hard to live in such a small cramped area on the boat? Well, I, I served in uh, two ships, uh, Ark Royal, which was the biggest ship in the Navy, and Centaur, which was a smaller aircraft carrier. Uh, I was uh, an observer, and I was uh, flying uh, in Gannett Airborne Early Warning Aircraft, uh, and um, in Ark Royal, <coughs> my cabin number was six X-ray one three three. Now the six meant it was six decks down from the flight deck, and the X-ray meant it was right at the back of the ship, um, because Z being the the last compartment, and the one three three was the uh, cabin number. There were three junior officers in the cabin, and uh, we had um, two cots. Um, and then there was uh, someone else uh, on the uh, upper cot. That was that's where I was. So there was, there was one below me, and there was one um, adjacent to it. And uh, we were right over the one of the propellers. And every time the ship got up speed, and remember, she did that every time she launched aircraft or recovered aircraft or was on anti-submarine maneuvers. Um, the you could hear it underneath going ji jung gi di jung gi jung and as it did that all the drawers used to come out ji jung gi di jung and if you didn't lock your wardrobe doors they would fly backwards and forwards Was it difficult to move from Ireland to England? Well, I was 19 years old and I had been to England before so it's my second, third time because I'd come for holidays and I was coming over to get married to Granddad, and uh, no, it wasn't difficult, but I found it very strange. It was very noisy, very smelly, big, huge fog. They had the, they had the smog in November, and I had started a new job, and I had to walk to work, and the bus driver had to have the conductor walking in front of the bus so that it didn't crash into the pavement. So I thought, if this is what England is like, I don't think I'm going to like it. Uh, when you were first married and living in Scotland, when uh, Dad was born, was that a really hard time? Well, it was, because um, I was uh, a junior officer. I was a, a pilot officer, and uh, I was uh, under the age of 25, and in those days, if you're under the age of 25, you weren't entitled to live in married quarters, which is where families lived. So I moved up there first, and uh, they had some substandard quarters. They were uh, converted uh, middle uh, single-story offices, and uh, they converted them into uh, houses. And uh, I had to sign a, a piece of paper to say that if anybody uh, who was entitled came and they needed my house, I'd move out. And uh, your nanny was pregnant at the time, and we'd only been living there for about six weeks when your nanny went into hospital to uh, have your dad. And then a squadron came in and I was evicted. And I remember walking around St Andrews, which was our nearest proper town, and uh, it was January and it was snowing. 
and I was trying to find somewhere to bring my uh, wife and my new son uh, out because I, I was chucked out of my house. They're very, very uh, uh, nice and um, very welcoming and um, very supportive really. And uh, But of course all of this was very new to me because uh, I'd never had a baby before. So having a baby and uh, in, an, in January in, in Scotland when it was minus 10 and snow on the ground and uh, it was all new. But I did quite like Scotland and I liked the, I liked the people in Fife in Scotland and St Andrews is a lovely university town and when the summer came and we moved house to the other little house um, we had three houses there all together before we uh, before we left and went to Germany is it different living in Germany 20 years after World War II well we went to Germany in 1966 uh, I went to well, I was posted to um, Dusseldorf, and I worked uh, in the um, uh, air traffic uh, control radar room there. Uh, the RAF uh, had half the room, and the uh, civilian uh, Germans at the airport were on the other half. So we worked in the, with the same radar in the same room. Well, we went from our funny little house in Scotland to a beautiful centrally heated house with a huge cellar, and. Um, Nice garden, nice furniture. Dusseldorf was paradise. We were living quite near to the River Rhine. We then had not just Stephen, but we had John as well. And John was a baby. And um, I was able to go into Dusseldorf whenever I wanted with the pram. And they would put the pram on the tram and take you into the centre of the city. And uh, people were really helpful to people with children. And uh, we had a great, great lot of friends. And uh, we did uh, bought a new car and we were travelling all over Europe. Well, not all over Europe, mainly Austria and Italy. But um, it was a totally different world. And I loved it. That nearly three years we were there, wasn't it? So it was really nice. So we, we had Stephen and John then, didn't have Tom. Was it difficult as a Catholic Irish family uh, moving to Northern Ireland? Well, uh, we were stationed at a place called Bishop's Court, uh, seven miles from Downpatrick on the coast. And uh, it was 1969, we were there in March 1969, and uh, the major troubles hadn't started then. I mean, there were one or two civil rights marches and things like that. And uh, it didn't really all blow up until the August. And uh, from then on, it got progressively more difficult from a security point of view. But uh, living on the, the RAF station, there no problem whatsoever. Um, well, 1969. Um, we, Tom was born in 1970 and we were living in Northern Ireland. So uh, I had, uh, when I arrived at, at our new house, the cleaning lady in my house uh, was a Catholic and she put me straight on which butcher and which baker I should buy my bread and my meat from because they came onto the base with a van. So that was my first taste of saying, oh, I can't go to a Protestant baker or a Protestant butcher. <laughs> and, and of course, uh, Stephen and, uh, and John went to a Catholic school, whereas most of the other children on the base were probably Church of England and they went to a different school. But no, for us, we didn't really have any problems at all, apart from after 1970, when Tom was born, we weren't able to uh, go into Belfast anymore because they were rioting on the streets and we were advised not to go to Belfast. Was living in Cold War Berlin hard with the constant threat of war? Well, when we went to uh, Berlin, um, it was uh, 1988. By that time, I was a wing commander and I was the CEO of a thing called the Berlin Air Safety Center. And we shared that uh, with the Americans, the French, and Russians. We actually, the Russians, we shared an operations room with them. And uh, you were very, very conscious of uh, the fact that uh, you were deep in the Cold War, because, of course, in Berlin, 
there was a wall all around the city and you were surrounded by uh, East Germany. Uh, but uh, things were getting better because it was the time of Gorbachev and we had Glasnost and Perestroika and uh, even though our Russians were uh, uh, still um, very much um, running uh, the whole of uh, Eastern Europe, um, uh, there were cracks in the situation. And in the time we were there, people were still being shot, trying to get over the wall to come to uh, West Berlin. But uh, our responsibility really was uh, running the air corridors uh, in and out of uh, Berlin. And uh, in fact, we were there until October 1989, when I was promoted and posted back to England. Uh, and uh, three weeks after we left, the, uh, the big revolution occurred and uh, the wall came down. Where would you go home? Well, home to me is always Ireland, um, Middleton. Um, but that my home is gone because it's been demolished. Um, when I go back to Ireland, I feel it's home. But I've lived here in Maidenhead for 22 years in this same house. And Maidenhead is my home now, and I would probably not want to move unless I had to. So I would call Maidenhead my home now. Okay. Yes, certainly this is our home now, and having had 19 houses since we were married, um, and having been here for 22 years, of course, you can, you can imagine that, uh, that we're, we're, we're fairly uh, well ensconced here. But uh, I was born in uh, Croydon and uh, I, I spent the first 19 years of my life uh, living uh, there. So uh, I always hark back to, uh, to that, but no, home, home is Maidenhead now.